Welcome to Waterline Academy, my name's Paul and in this video about your Paddy Open Water Diver course, I'm going to show you how to dive in under 10 minutes. So if you're new to scuba diving or just looking to refresh your skills, then consider subscribing to this channel for weekly scuba diving skills and tips. Let's dive in. One of the most important skills you're going to use on every dive is clearing your mask. Clearing your mask is as simple as blowing out through your nose so that air replaces the water that's in your mask. You may have noticed by now that a scuba diving mask has a nose piece and that is so that you can breathe out through your nose to equalize and clear the mask. To practice clearing your mask, let some water in. You can do that by breaking the seal at the top of the mask and letting the water trickle in. At first, just let a little bit of water in so that you can get used to the sensation. Take a long, deep breath. Hold the top of the mask to make sure no air escapes. Then, breathe out through your nose while tilting your head back. That'll make sure that the water drains out the lowest point of the mask. Your mask should now be clear. If it's not, simply repeat the process until it is. Before we get into equalizing your ears, if you're finding this interesting and are considering taking a diving course, stick around because in a moment I'm going to tell you how you can start your open water diver course for free no matter where you are in the world. You'll often hear divers talking about equalizing their ears. In actual fact, they're talking about equalizing their eustachian tubes. As you've just seen with the balloon, any air space is going to be compressed the deeper you go. And that means the two air spaces inside your body are also going to be compressed. Your eustachian tubes and your lungs. In the next skill, I'm going to show you how to clear your regulator. And when I do that, I'm going to talk more about equalizing the air space in your lungs. But for now, equalizing your eustachian tube is something really important. So pay attention. As you descend and the water pressure increases, the air space in your eustachian tube is going to be squeezed. Some divers might tell you that you can equalize that air space just by wiggling your jaw from side to side or swallowing. And that may be true for some divers, but most divers need to use the Volsalva maneuver. The Volsalva maneuver is simply blocking your nose and blowing gently against your blocked nose. If you do that now, you'll feel your ears pop. That's because air is being forced into your eustachian tubes from your sinuses. As you're descending, it's really important to equalize early and often. The next skill on the list is clearing your regulator. There's one really important part to clearing your regulator, and that has to do with equalizing the air in your lungs. Throughout your dive, your lungs are going to be equalizing while you're breathing. As you breathe in, the air will equalize with the surrounding water pressure. And as you breathe out, you're going to breathe out that compressed air. However, if you take a breath from your regulator and then ascend, the air in your lungs is going to expand. If you don't release that air, at a certain point, your lungs are going to rupture. And so the most important part about clearing your regulator is that you must not hold your breath. And in order to do that, you need to blow a small stream of bubbles, a lot like when you're whistling. To practice clearing your regulator, take a long, deep breath. Hold the regulator on the hose and take it out of your mouth. Remember to blow a small stream of bubbles to ensure your airway is open. Hold the mouthpiece of the regulator facing downwards. That'll make sure that the regulator doesn't free flow. The regulator is going to fill with water. So when you put it back in your mouth, you need to clear the water by blowing out into the regulator. Once you've cleared the regulator, hold your tongue to the roof of your mouth and take a cautious breath. There may still be water in the regulator, in which case your tongue will deflect the water while you draw a slow breath. If there's still water in your mouth or the regulator, blow that out and continue your dive. If the regulator's been out of your mouth for some time and you don't have any air in your lungs, you can still clear the regulator using the purge button on the front of the regulator. Hold your tongue to the roof of your mouth to seal your airway. Then press the purge button on the front of the regulator. That'll blast any water out of the regulator and then you can take a cautious breath and continue your dive. Now I often get asked, if you're already on your dive and you're not ascending, why can't you just hold your breath? And there's two reasons. The first and most important here is that you want to develop the habit of blowing air out of your lungs whenever the regulator's out of your mouth. That means you'll operate on autopilot. Whenever the regulator's out of your mouth, you'll be blowing a small stream of bubbles. That'll make sure that your airway is open and whether you're ascending or a swell passes overhead and changes the water pressure above you, 
your airway will be open and you won't risk the possibility of rupturing your lung. And the second reason has to do with the relationship between pressure and depth. Earlier in the video, I said I would tell you how you can start your open water diver course for free no matter where you are in the world. PADI is one of the largest certification agencies in the world. And there are others like SSI, which is Scuba Schools International. While PADI charge you to start the theory section of your open water course, SSI recognized that it's inexpensive to deliver digital media in today's day and age. And so they make the theory section of your open water course free. And in order to access that, all you need to do is follow the link that I've set up in the description of this video. Set up an account on the My SSI website and you'll be able to download the My SSI app. In that app, you'll be able to start the open water theory section for free no matter where you are in the world. That app will also give you details on your closest dive center where you'll be able to take the pool dives of your open water course. So if you're interested in taking your open water course, then click on the link below and set up an account on the My SSI website. Before I show you how to control your buoyancy so that you can float seemingly weightless above the reef, I need to show you the second part to clearing your regulator, and that is how to recover your regulator if it comes out of your mouth. On the odd occasion, I've had my regulator knocked out of my mouth, normally from somebody who's descending above me and has kicked it out by mistake. There are other times where I've taken it out on purpose to take a photograph, and other times where I'm at the surface and I have my snorkel in my mouth, and I need to change my snorkel for my regulator so that I can descend. Whenever your regulator comes out of your mouth, it's gonna to drop to your right-hand side. So to recover your regulator, tilt your body to create a gap between the regulator and your body. Using your right arm, pull your elbow into your body. Touch your knee and then slide your hand up your bum and circle your arm out, around and up, until it's in front of you. Slide your left hand down your right arm until you find the regulator hose over your shoulder. Then you can replace the regulator, clear it and continue your dive. Whenever you're on a dive, you need to control your buoyancy. To keep you warm on a dive, you wear a wetsuit. A wetsuit's made out of neoprene, which is thousands of tiny bubbles, and that wetsuit will float at the surface. That means you need to wear a weight belt which is made of lead so that you can become negatively buoyant and descend into your dive. To neutralize that negative buoyancy, you wear a BCD or a buoyancy control device, which is the jacket that you wear which inflates and deflates at your command. That means you can inflate your BCD to stay positively buoyant and float at the surface. Then you deflate your BCD so that you can begin your descent. When you get down to your dive depth, you want to become neutrally buoyant so that you float seemingly weightless above the reef. At the end of your dive, when you're ascending, you let air out of your BCD to control the speed of your ascent. To control your buoyancy underwater, you need to add enough air into your BCD so that you neither float nor sink. You become neutrally buoyant. Being neutrally buoyant underwater means that you can drift over the reef without having to swim to stay at a certain depth. To start practicing your buoyancy, let all the air out of your BCD so that you know that you're negatively buoyant. Then add a small amount of air and take a breath to see how that's affected your buoyancy. When you first start diving, most instructors are gonna give you quite a lot of lead to make sure that you're negatively buoyant. This will help them during a course to make sure you don't go floating to the surface in an uncontrolled ascent. That means during your course, you'll probably have to add more air to your BCD than you will in the future once you become confident in your buoyancy control skills. Add a small amount of air, take a few breaths to see how it's affected your buoyancy. If you're still negatively buoyant, add some more air and take some more breaths until you feel your knees lift from the pool. When you feel your knees lift from the pool as you breathe in and touch the pool as you breathe out, that's when you're neutrally buoyant. You can now swim around the pool and enjoy floating like they do in space. If you found value in this video, then click the link to this video to explore more scuba diving skills and tips.